She's one of Africa's most recognized stars, a leading actress in Nigeria's booming film industry. I love the African spirit, and this is why I do what I do, because I see how much potential there is in Africa and its people. Her rise to the top spans almost all facets of the entertainment industry, actress, singer, and television star. She owns responsibility to those who follow in her footsteps. I've come to a place where I've come to realize I have to leave something. I have to have a legacy. Increasingly, the role she might be most proud of, her emerging one as an activist for Africa. I didn't do these things because I thought anybody was seeing them. I did them because I am, I, I wanted to, I am passionate about Africa. This week on African Voices, actress and philanthropist Omotola Jalade Akende. fans circle the globe. Since her 1995 film debut in Nollywood, Nigeria's thriving film industry, she's appeared in some 300 films, selling millions of videos. But 2013 was even a bigger year for Omotala Akende. She became the first African celebrity to reach 1 million likes on Facebook and was named one of the most influential people in the world by Time Magazine for their annual Time 100 list. She also stars in her own reality TV show, the first Nigerian to do so. A road to stardom paved with childhood tragedy. I was really, really close to my dad, and my mom didn't like that because my mom was a disciplinarian. <laughs> and so she, she felt my dad was spoiling me and wasn't allowing her to give me, you know, the kind of training she wanted to give me. And so we always, you know, we're always at look ahead. When your father passed away when you were in your early teens, um, you then sort of had to step in to the role that he played as a father and almost be a paternal uh, figure. figure for your younger brothers. Right. And how was that? It was tough. It was tough. Um, in Africa, when you lose your father, and way back then, uh, a lot of things just go wrong, you know. Um, you have a lot of pressure from family, from outside forces. My mom wasn't really prepared, she was young, and then she had this little boys and myself. And so uh, life changed really drastically from the middle, upper class, to almost, it was lower than middle, <laughs> you know. So the struggle was intense. We had a certain lifestyle before my dad died. We had to make decisions, can we keep this lifestyle, is anybody here to help us? You know, all these decisions she had to make on her own, and I decided that I needed to step it up. And so I was just barely in my teens, but then I immediately became an adult. So my mom was like the father in the family because she had to go out more to work to make money, and I was like the mother. So I was... 12, 13, and I was already a mother. I was taking care of my younger ones, and I started working at the age of, age of 15 to help her, so. What was your first job? I was a model. A nice, okay. <laughs> yeah. How did that happen? Tell me how you got discovered as a model. Um, there was this gentleman on my street. Um, his name was Onivia Kerry He was, a, back in the days, like a supermodel, you know, we thought was a supermodel, and he was the Mr. Bick or something okay. and so we all loved him and he, he was very tall and very handsome and he was like the local star because <laughs> he lived in my neighborhood you see and so his mom was very close to my mom and my mom was always complaining about me because she, she always just thought I was gonna be loose because a lot of people would say things to you as a widow they'll tell you things like oh you know you can't take care of your children as a woman alone with these kids and because I was kind of like easy to look at she always thought you know boys you know around me all the time always coming to look for me that I would you know be loose you know so she kept complaining to all her friends like asking them to tell her things like if you see Omotola somewhere just let me know <laughs> like keep an eye on her or something so he got to know and he said you're always um, worried about this lady how about I put her to work how about I, how about me taking care of her and then she has a job, she's always with me, I'll take care of her. And for that reason, because I was always at home doing nothing and then she's at work, she doesn't know what I'm doing. She said, okay, at least I know she's with you during the day. So I started modeling with him and I grew very quick, <laughs> very quickly. After some success with modeling, Akende accidentally fell into her first acting opportunity. A model um, was going for an audition 
a movie cast and I wasn't there for myself I was there just to escort her and then she went in and then she did the audition and she didn't get the part and so she came out very very upset and she said you know you actually can go try and I said well I don't have any money she said no it's free I was like free <laughs> She said it was free, so I, I said, all right, that's not going to hurt me. <laughs> so I went and I tried, and I got one of the lead roles. I think people watching this will want to know uh, how that happened. Because did you hear you had the part right after? You right. I mean, you know, you will wait till after the audition, and um, it was one of those kind of ones where they would now come out and then tell you what the results were, people that, were, that, that would need to come back or people that already got the role, you know. So th they came out and said right there that I already had the role, and it was the role of a mermaid, and it was one of the lead roles. And so we're all stunned. I, d I didn't know how to react. So I looked at my friend, I was like, oopsie. And then she was really upset. <laughs> she was really, really yeah. upset. And her friend wasn't the only one upset. Akende's mother didn't like the idea and forbid her daughter to act. So I went to the director and I, and I told the director, I'm sorry, my mom won't let me do this movie. He was so upset. <laughs> and then he said, you know, I ha if I have to come, you know, speak to your mom about you, I wouldn't mind. I said, okay, if you can try. And they came and my mom chased them. <laughs> yeah, she chased them with brooms <laughs> and all of that. And so then he tried again. And then the next movie he was doing, he automatically just casted me as, you know, the lead character, which was Venom of Justice. And then the whole crew went to beg my mom. <laughs> it was very, very funny. The whole crew, the director, the assistant director, the producer, everybody went to beg my mom. Wow. They were all on their knees and she eventually said yes. That's an amazing story. <laughs> That's crazy. African story. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about your process uh, when you study for a role. You, it sounds to me and through our discussions that you've had a couple of painful experiences in your childhood. And I know a lot of actors and actresses channel that pain into the roles and you're known as a very intense actress talk to me a little bit about that process um i'm gonna go there <laughs> i i when i when i lost my father i was still in school i was still, uh, i was relatively a kid for many years i realized that i really didn't grieve and i i had a lot of anger a lot of questions and so when i started acting it was a release for me and so when i get into a character i actually become is very weird I become someone else I really do become someone else and um, ironically every role I got in the beginning of my career was always very very intense but now I can I can channel it still if I want to but in a very mature way and a controlled way right it's more you're more in control yes. of it as opposed yeah. to just letting it gush forward yeah you know uncontrollably but it's still is always there. It helps you, especially when you're doing anything that is related to things of pain, and you know, it it, it just takes you there. Next, Akende discusses her attempts at reality TV, music, and activism. I wanted to speak out. I wanted to say more, and there's so much you can just say with words.